services. Yeah, yeah, we we were down there, folks, and I think uh, we've been down a couple of minutes and uh, and stuff. Uh, sorry about that. It's unexplained. Uh, the, I got perfect signal. I think we're just being jammed and censored, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it. And I can see it, you again. So are we live now? Yeah, we're live. We're live again. And, okay. Uh, so uh, if if I can I uh, make ahead. some comments and uh, yeah. segueing on to what um, Luis has just said. Uh, by the way, is Ariel still with us? Yes, he is. Oh okay, no, great. no, no, he is. No, but he he's... stood up. He stood up just now. <coughs> yeah, but he can okay. probably hear us. Go ahead. Okay. So, yeah. So um, yeah. So <clears throat> this whole business about uh, being jammed and having cell phones uh, interfered with and whatnot. I'd heard tell of these things. Um, <clears throat> they, uh, as I think you might know, um, uh, my um, my public uh, activism really only um, came about uh, three years ago now, um, with the rise of the Idle No More movement. Um, up until that point, I was, uh, you know, kind of a comfortable um, academic, um, you know, who wrote articles that very few people read, and I never made that jump into into the public forum, but I did so back in late uh, 2012 with the advent, the rise of the Idle No More movement. Uh, so I'd heard tell of uh, jammings and whatnot, but uh, I had never directly experienced that. However, I do think I experienced that back uh, a couple of years ago when the Conservatives had their um, national convention here in Calgary back in uh, October of, um, of 2013. I can share with you what happened, and you can tell me whether this was just a um, random cell phone glitch or whether this was jamming. So on that day, <clears throat> I was not able to communicate via cell phone with any of the activists, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, who were uh, part of uh, street theater and protest close to where the Conservatives were having their convention. Um, Whenever I tried to call somebody or somebody tried to call me, they got a consistent busy signal. Um, one gal who I called, um, I could barely hear her. There was so much static, and then the call just dropped. This didn't happen just once. This happened consistently throughout the three days of the conservative campaign. And when I posted my experiences online on, uh, on, on, on one of the Idle No More sites and said, I'm wondering whether... Uh, you know, cell phone signals are being jammed. There was a young woman who posted and said, you know, I've been a long time activist and yes, they did this to us uh, during the Occupy movement in, in Vancouver. So I suppose the, the, the clear sign that you're being jammed would be uh, not able to use your cell phone or if you are using your cell phone, there's, you know, static that makes it impossible to talk. Uh, would, does this sound familiar to you, Dee? Well, Dee? I, th I think your experience in Calgary during the convention, I believe, last year uh, is different. Because usually when they're jamming you, it's a signal <coughs> issue. Uh, so the fact that you got a busy signal, meaning you had a signal, I think what was happening there is there it was a, a back end, like why we stopped twice in the last 10, 15 minutes. It's a back end thing. I think they, they just... Uh, through Intel, knew who the people were, and just in right. the backbone of the network built into it, they just made sure you guys couldn't contact. Uh, exactly. if, if you were jammed, you wouldn't get a busy signal. Uh, during Occupy, uh, they, were most, they weren't really using the trucks per se, because it was so obvious. And by the way, portable anti-jamming equipment uh, doesn't really exist. Uh, there are uh, frequency analyzers that could detect the, where the jamming equipment is, and that's particularly helpful in the in the mobile portable ones that are hidden uh, with people, and and they're becoming smaller and smaller and smaller uh, as the years go by. Right. So in terms of practicality of us having anti-jamming equipment, uh, no such thing for us on limited budget to do, uh, but except the speed test app, uh, .net app. But again, when they use the portable gear, which is what they mostly use, that just breaks up the signal and that you're down. Modern day apps, uh, yeah, they go down, but then as soon as the person moves away from you and you get the signal back, so you gotta monitor your signal strength. And usually there's a little icon on your smartphone where you can monitor the signal strength. So if you 
one check that you have a signal bars, whether it's one or five, um, and you're still getting a busy signal. And what you were talking about in Calgary at the Conservative Convention last year, yes. that's a back end uh, total thing. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Day, I do have uh, another comment that I want to make uh, as I was lis listening to Luis uh, talk about um, his experience with uh, you know Facebook and other social media and having government agents and spies uh, monitor what's said. Yes, that is so. Um, uh, certainly, uh, I saw examples of that uh, back east at the anti-fracking uh, movement uh, back at Elsa Patog, uh, New Brunswick. Um, the people who were, were charged, indigenous and non-indigenous, uh, uh, with various offenses and indeed were sued by the, uh, by the uh, company that was doing fracking there, one of the things that they referenced in their affidavits in support was uh, chatter on Facebook. So um, we are being monitored. Um, so, you know, my practical advice to anyone is uh, obviously do not, uh, do not consider Safebook to be a, a safe form of communication. Um, it's better to meet in person. Uh, it's better to have, uh, you know, send an email to somebody. Don't obviously plan uh, events uh, through Facebook. Uh, you might as well be discussing uh, your personal, intimate details of your personal life, uh, you know, in a bar with a, with with a stranger. I mean, there are ears and eyes everywhere, so sensitive communication should take place offline. Full stop. And one other thing, Luis. Uh to identify agent provocateurs, because as I was saying earlier when we were down, um, you know, the Occupy movement four years ago is the greatest, most instantaneous worldwide movement in the history of the world. It reached all seven continents, and yes, the first one was Occupy Wall Street on September 17, 2011, but by Halloween, the end of October 2011, there was 6,000 occupied cities and large municipalities, and the biggest organizing tool was the use of social media but the way Occupy used social media because you want everybody on the same page and live stream was just in its infancy in 2011 that the Occupy model is to use social media but because you want everyone on the same page and because seeing is believing seeing something of all our senses represents the truth the example I give is you'd rather want to see a car crash, morbid as it is, rather than hear it a block away or someone explain it to you. It doesn't really represent truth, but seeing something represents truth. So the Occupy model was you use social media, but you funnel everybody to the live stream page, to the live stream page, to the live stream page. Because once they're there, literally everyone's on the same page. And live stream being in such an interactive media, that's why the greatest live streamers, you know, from day one to today are the Occupy live streamers. Cause, and none more famous than, you know, back in the day as the two most popular ones, uh, Global Rev, which is Occupy Wall Street's live stream mothership, and us here. Um, it's a, you got to start live streaming more and more on the ground and promote it heavily. Uh, because one thing with cops I always found is they hate being live. There's a thing with if you're videotaping, the cops will still beat the shit out of you or do whatever they have to do because they know they could seize that that video camera, that cell phone, and no problem. Now, if they know that you're live, and that's the trick. In the Dominican Republic, you don't usually live stream. So I'm sure as part of the organizing of, of this uh, protest, you do need police liaison. I know it might sound ugh. But here in North America, we have, and Occupy had it as well, police liaisons. So as long as they know that this person is live and maybe they have something that says media or live streamer or something to identify them and protect your live streamers, by the way, that if they know that they're live, cops tend to behave because they know if, if this person is filming live, as they're beating the crap out of someone, and hopefully that doesn't happen, but just as an example, it's live. If they want to seize that afterwards or break that equipment, uh, it's useless because it's already been live. It's protected. Correct. It's live. So that's just some thoughts. Uh, that's a any, good thought. Any response there, Luis, and then uh, Ariel? Okay. This, this has been very helpful. 
and I appreciate your time and your efforts and your um, your your thoughts for getting this movement and this protest um, stronger and um, with uh, hoping good results with it. We'll keep you posted. We'll keep you informed. We'll send you images. We'll definitely live stream or try to live stream for you guys. Yeah, because we've been following because of Ariel, uh, you know, for over three years what's been going on at DR. And yeah, <clears throat> in New York, there's a lot of Dominicans there, but certainly Toronto is the Dominican Republic capital of, uh, of uh, Canada. And, and certainly Toronto, because of our baseball team, the Toronto Blue Jays, I think we were the first ones to really start getting a lot of baseball players from the Dominican Republic. So Toronto has a big love for the Dominican Republic and there's a lot of tourism. So Toronto, of all the places in Canada, is, is a good place to start, you know, yeah. to build a boycott <laughs> DR movement and, and this live stream helps. Check. Definitely. Yeah, Jay, I think definitely, Jay, and, and thanks for uh, getting that plug in for Toronto. Um, I'm not surprised to hear that Toronto is the uh, is the site uh, for the largest expatriate Dominican community in Canada. And uh, yes, Luis, I mean, uh, you know, think north of the border as well when you're thinking about uh, fundraising events and whatnot. Um, I, I would just like to say, Luis, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure um, <clears throat> listening to you. Um, you know, um, myself and so many other uh, people in Canada, of course, uh, you know, we love, we love Latin Americans. Um, you know, we go there, uh, go south for vacations. Um, uh, you know, we always come back with stories of the wonderful, warm uh, people that we meet, uh, the wonderful Latinos who we know. Um, you know, the people of South America are resilient. Um, they're warm, they're gregarious. Uh, for me, sitting here in the comfort of my Calgary apartment, I, you know, I, I find it hard to reconcile these positive images of, of these warm, demonstrative people and the terrible repression of governments uh, down there. I mean, things are changing in some countries, but uh, there are still enormous uh, strides to go. Uh, there are a lot of Latin Americans here in Calgary. Um, many of them work out at the gym I work at, and, you know, they're just such warm, friendly people. And, uh, and you know, it's really quite heartbreaking to see the uh, struggles that uh, people like yourself and, and so many other people experience in the Dominican Republic and elsewhere throughout that region. Um, I, you know, uh, please drop me a line, um, uh, you know, um, if you, you can get my uh, contact information from, uh, from Day, um, if there's anything that I can do, uh, you know, as a resource person or, or even as a public speaker, uh, please let me know. Um, I will do my own part uh, in, in a small way to assist you uh, in your cause, um, knowing full well that whatever I can do is, is nothing in comparison to the work that you and so many others do in that, in that country where indeed your freedom and your lives are literally on the line. Um, God bless you. I love what you do. Uh, Dave, uh, hello, Dave. Yo, go ahead, Ariel. Oh, is, is Luis still? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. still yeah. live? Yeah. <coughs> yep. okay. Yeah, and Brian, Brian is still live? Yep. Yep. I'm still oh. here. Yeah, I was posting there on the, uh, on the chat. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Luis, I would, I, I would like to ask Luis uh, a very important question be, before he leaves it. Before he leaves us tonight, I'd like to i like to ask uh, Louise an important question, please, Dee. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Louise. Uh, yeah. You know, we uh, again uh, uh, through social media and and uh, through the bits and pieces that we have gotten uh, through. Uh, Dominican mainstream media, primarily uh, TV uh, and the uh, articles, uh, the digital newspapers, uh, Dominican Republic has very fine, very fine uh, uh, journalists. Uh, from the bits and pieces that we have gotten online, 
uh, because there's one thing uh, getting the perspective uh, on the internet uh, <coughs> from what's happening there. Uh, you you guys that are you guys that are on the ground, you that have uh, close contacts with uh, prominent activists like like Manuel Robles, which, which I know is is one of the most prominent. Uh, voices uh, for social struggle in the Dominican Republic. People like Manuel Robles and other prominent uh, activists that are there, and, and that nucleus, that nucleus of ac activists that you have, as you mentioned, primarily uh, professionals. They're professionals, they're uh, 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 students. I know uh, young people like yourself, uh, middle class people. Uh, what, what, is, what is your perspective going at, until Wednesday and, and beyond. Now that you guys have come on board on live stream with D. Shanger, with people like Brian Seaman, uh, getting input from the live chat from these fine uh, uh, cyber, activists, cyber activists, and we get inputs uh, on the live chat as well, with all this, uh, uh, with all this uh, interactivity. How do you project Cadena Humana Oisoy going into Wednesday? Do you think the crowds will get bigger? Do you think this is going to snowball as it's spreading to the different cities? We already know that. But what? Can you give us a feel from on the ground? Can you give us a feel from on the ground so that we on the cyber activist side can 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 have a, a, a better a better perspective and a better feel and and what to expect and to see what expectations we have. And, and look going forward, looking into the future, what we can do for you guys uh, going into the future, so that so that both the cyber activist side and the underground side of Cadeno Manos Hoy Soy, how as you go forward, how do you think this synergism, the synergism between the uh, social media side and the underground side going into Wednesday and beyond, how do you see this this whole composite picture of Cadeno Hoy Soy, not only from underground but from social media as well. How do you see the whole the whole thing coming together going into Wednesday and beyond? All right, I think it's it's growing. I think it's going to be bigger than last Wednesday. I know for sure that um, important people, important independent communicators are going, which is good because um, those they they are the ones that could actually say or express to people or uh, what really goes on there and um, in it, it, it's just in it's just the fact that we're gonna have uh, Cadena Humana in 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 other cities it's 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 a growth of the movement it's a it's 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 big and it'll keep getting bigger I, I I'm very positive about this no, Luis, uh, can you wait one second? Can you type the name of the hashtag of that, the, the name of the protest? And what does that mean? Carrera, sure. I, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um, it's Cadena Humana Oisoe, which is Human Chain Oisoe. It's the name of the office that um, committed the, 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 the act of corruption and where the architect took his life uh, 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 D, D, can I interject can I get, go ahead can I interject an actor thought okay yeah we yeah we we already we already are sensing that I just wanted you to confirm it because uh, again from the social media side we we are confirming that what do you think Louise what do you think Louise that uh, the cyber activist community specifically outside of Dominican Republic and specifically in the diaspora, Dominican diaspora in North America and, and people that are Dominicans that are not Dominicans, but those of us that sympathize, those that sympathize uh, with Cadena Humana Oisoy, uh, not on the ground in Dominican Republic, uh, but here in North America. What do you suggest, what do you suggest that, uh, that this community that's supporting you uh, 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 globally, uh, what do you suggest we should do going forward? What can we do so that the multiplier effect, the multiplier effect of social media, that is that that it's always in an explosive mood in North America because this is where it came from, from Occupy Wall Street. I talked to Mike Pel 
I talked to Mike Pelagati, uh, uh, who's from the, Pel uh, from the Pell Report. I don't mean to get away from the subject because I know some of these people. I've met Matt Hopper uh, personally. Uh, these are dynamic people. But, you know, we have talent. We have talent here in North America. What do you think we can do uh, in the States to help the multiplier effect, this synergism between the underground movement and the cyber activist side and social media uh, outside, outside of the Dominican Republic, inside the Dominican Republic. But what can we do from the states to help you guys so that you guys can keep on expanding and growing? Give, give, us, give us some specifics that, that you would want us to do so that the movement in Dominican Republic continues to expand within social media and from within social media, it, it expands on the ground. Right? Well, what kind of thought would you have for that? Well, actually, it, what, 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 what I could actually ask you for, it, it, is to, to help us raise awareness <laughs> and, and, and ask for justice and uh, stop corrupt, fight corruption. Because since we have no uh, um, a justice system, a, we are not able to, we're not being su successful um, getting people to trial, getting people judged, getting people to pay what they have done. Um, we have, we, we've, we've been fighting for but this part, I think government controls every, every judge, every, every, every um, instance in justice. So, what 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 can I ask you for is just support us on the net to to raise that awareness that we need corruption to be fought. We need corruption to stop in this country. We need justice, we independent justice, and we need to get government either out or working. That's that's basically it. We, the, the most powerful um, a weapon right now is the internet and through the internet and social medias um, you can you, you can take down a government and we're getting to that point so Luis uh, of course you you already have become aware that we in North America are supporting you and is that uh, you, you, your your people and on the ground there are becoming aware that you're getting support in North America. Uh, is that is that having a is that a factor? Is that a is that a determining factor? A psychological factor in the struggle? Is that uh, is that helping the dynamics on the ground? I mean, as you know, that we're giving you uh, support, unconditional support in North America. <laughs> have you have you heard any comments from people like like Manuel Robles and other people that? Perhaps they're not as active in social media. They're active, but they're not as, as active as, as some of us are in, in cyber activism primarily, because I consider myself primarily cyber activist. But the, the people on the ground, the people on the ground, how do, what is their perception of the uh, solidarity that they're beginning to uh, gather in North America? Have you heard any comments from, from people on the ground about, about this? Um, they're, they're certainly happy that with this live stream was going to be today and um, I can get I can answer you I can answer you tomorrow uh, after this but yes they're happy they're they're always happy on any support that we get especially you know from North America because here either even being an independent country when North America coughs. We have a terrible cold <laughs> already. Yeah, plus, uh, Luis, are you still there? Yep. Okay, yeah. One other thing, Ariel, uh, we're doing it now, how, how we can help. Because, uh, yes, we need support from the people, and that's a public thing. But behind the scenes, we're doing it now. You need training. That's why... I was asking Brian, uh, you know, uh, tips human rights wise on how to keep everyone safe because uh, the history of protesting is a very modern and very new thing in the Dominican Republic, as Ariel's pointed out numerous times. 
So yeah. how we do things here and, and <clears throat> training that and how to use social media and especially the live streams, you know, that training is another part of it. Um, any comments? Oh, certainly. You, you, you're, in, you're, you're correct. That's correct. Yeah. Brian, do you have any questions? From what um, you heard? I guess just to uh, reiterate uh, and by way of summing up is uh, I do see, <coughs> excuse me, I've been battling asthma lately, excuse me, <coughs> there. Um, I think I see a lot of merit to doing some uh, street theater, uh, doing plays, politically oriented, politically themed plays, uh, producing some movies uh, through song and dance. Um, raising awareness about the uh, the situation in in the Dominican Republic um, throughout history, um, theater, art, painting, sculpture, song, dance, and now of course movies have proven to be important uh, tools in uh, in bringing awareness to various causes. So, uh, Luis, I would encourage you and uh, the activists in the Dominican Republic to uh, to do to do more of that. Um, you know, the authorities have the guns and they're not afraid to turn those guns on you. So to stay safe, I would suggest uh, find uh, uh, non-confrontational means to, uh, to raise awareness about the human rights uh, situation in the Dominican Republic. And as I was uh, saying earlier in, in alluding to the Irish experience, um, you know, many of the songs that... Uh, we all sing on St. Patrick's Day, uh, you know, and throughout the year when we want to have fun, uh, we sing these Irish songs. Many of those songs, indeed, uh, were revolution had hidden revolutionary messages in them. It was a way for the Irish, who were an oppressed people, occupied for eight centuries by the English, it was a way for them to uh, to uh, protest and to raise awareness without uh, taking up uh, taking up guns. Yep. We'll keep doing that. And you, you've gone to all three, right? The last three Wednesdays, the first three? <coughs> that is correct. <coughs> yeah, and we also talked earlier in the show, and we have a lot of new viewers and, uh, and stuff. Of, you, you, now, you also got to be concerned behind the scenes with agent provocateurs, right? Um, uh, Brian alluded to, uh, yeah. you know, one way is, they're the ones advocating, uh, you know, more violence, which this mm -hmm. is a total peaceful violence. We can't say that enough. Uh, the intent of the organizers and the people going to these, they're peaceful protests. As well, in, in the Occupy movement, being there since day one and being involved, you know, with all the live streams worldwide, because we were the only ones going 24-7 during our occupation, um, that we learned... Uh, to really identify three main traits of an agent provocateur. So I impart this to you, four main traits. Uh, and for, for you to sort of raise an eyebrow that, hmm, maybe. But the three traits are this, and I know that it might strange, uh, four. One, these people are lazy motherfuckers. They're lazy, okay? <laughs> two, two, they got the eagle the size of Manhattan. They got an eagle. Oh and then third, if that's not bad enough, they're the ones taking credit for everything that's going on. Right? Uh -huh. And four, and four, because you have leaders of these, they like to attach themselves to the leaders, right? Now, with yeah. Occupy, that proved difficult because we had no leaders. Everyone yeah. was equal. We had certain facilitators, like media facilitators, live stream facilitators, sort of in charge, but it was all horizontal leadership. So it was it threw them for a loop. So since that was out of the question, you know, we dealt with thousands just at Occupy Toronto and tens of not hundreds of thousands worldwide. And amongst us live streamers, we always talked about it. So and how to identify them. And we came up with those three main ones. Again, they're lazy. Two, they're, they got the ego the size of Manhattan. And then this is the kicker. They, they're the ones taking credit for everything. And down there, they will attach themselves to the leaders. So just file that away there, Luis. Uh, I'll keep it day, in mind. Day, I almost choked to death uh, laughing at you. I know. Yes, I, I, uh, yeah. 
thanks for almost killing me here. <laughs> no! Um, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah, these are certainly signs. Um, Day, you will be very knowledgeable about this incident I'm about to allude to. Um, back in 2007, 2008, there was a there was a demonstration at Monticello, Quebec, and uh, a union. I was there. Leader. I was there. You were there. You were there. You so you saw it firsthand. There was a union guy, you know, long in the tooth. God bless uh, the veterans who were working with the youth to to effect change. This guy called out the Asian provocateurs. He called them out. You remember that? Yeah, because he here. Yeah, remember yeah. how also earlier for those that and, they, and it, it turned out that they were they were QPP Quebec Provincial Police and and people filmed them and in social media outed that person big time and you know what it was proven that he was a cop Quebec Provincial Police yeah and you know how they identified him he had the same boots as the cops except he was dressed <laughs> undercover <laughs> and what did they do when he, he was outed by that union old union guy they grabbed him. And put him in the yeah. paddy wagon just to get him out of there because he <laughs> his job was useless. He was outed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It, it, yeah, the Monticello. That's when the first trilateral North American uh, free trade deal. There was uh, Harpo. There was Bush Jr. It was two thousand and seven, by the way. Uh, yeah. And it was uh, shit. Who was the prime minister? The uh, the president of uh, was it Fox of Mexico? They were I all think, there. I think it was Vincente Fox. Yeah. Yeah. They were all there at Monticello in an old castle uh, on the yeah. border between Quebec and Toronto. I mean, uh, in Ontario, and uh, is on the Quebec side and. It's a small place. Uh, this castle, they had those three ready to sign this deal and 400 CEOs of all these rich corporations and yeah. helicopters, heavy, heavy, heavy security. There was about 5,000 people and it, and there was only one main road in and one out, right, on both the north and the south part. So, I mean, they had that place locked down, but there was still 5,000. I wasn't able to live stream. The technology wasn't there, but I did videotape it and... Uh, and, and whatnot. It got a little crazy needlessly, but we got nowhere near inside of there. But uh, yeah, it was a, a, a sad day. And uh, yeah, that was, that was wild. <laughs> well, a sad day, but very instructive because I mean, yes. uh, that video went, went viral and anybody who cares about democracy in this land um, saw it. And Saw the union guy out the uh, out the agent provocateur, and yes, as you correctly pointed out, it turned out he was a QPP officer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I guess that reinforces day the the uh, overarching message from tonight, which is um, we gotta make people accountable, and the best way to make them accountable is to be there and record and out them in social media. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Ariel, any comments? In New York uh, City. And uh, so that's uh, just for our late viewers. We have Brian Seaman, uh, human rights legal advisor extraordinaire in Calgary. <laughs> we have Luis Muria uh, in uh, the capital of Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo. And uh, um, DR's own Ariel Fernare is joining us in New York City. And uh, Ariel, any comments? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out uh, if it's possible. I'm in the process of, of uh, uh, traveling to the Caribbean uh, next weekend. I'm going to be busy with travel plans and a lot of things. These are more personal family matters. But uh, if it's at all possible, uh, if I can work it into the agenda, uh, it'd be nice to go on Wednesday if I can get more information. Uh, Later on, after after the show, you guys in DR, Luis, you can send me some more specifics as to uh, who I can contact. Maybe you guys have a contact for that uh, action on Wednesday, and if I can work it into my agenda, I definitely like to uh, link up link up on the ground, make one of my uh, rare cameo appearances on the ground. I always work behind the scenes. Uh, 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 D, I, I think, uh, again, you, you, uh, uh, Occupy Toronto live stream uh, is a form, uh, has been a form. I know you work uh, with the uh, 
Uh, First Nations, I forgot that code word that you guys used some time back. I, what was that code word that you guys used? Yar. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, the, the, uh, no, you had a code word from the, uh, uh, it was a code word from the First Nations language uh, and the anti-fracking movement of some, a while back. I, I can't remember. When you were having those, uh, uh, you, were, you were having some fracking in Nova Scotia or something. And it New was, Brunswick, uh, it, New Brunswick. Uh, yeah, in New Brunswick. What was the name of that? Uh, it, it was a specific code that code you, you guys use. I, I forgot I, it. I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, that's from Elsa Booktook First Nations in New Brunswick. It's about an that, hour. Yeah, what, uh, what, was that, what was that word again? Uh, I don't know which word. We use so many. I you don't just know. said it. You just said it. Elsa what Booktook. Are you, what are you that's alluding it. to? Yeah, well, Elsa Booktook is, is a First name Nation. Of the a Mi'kmaq yeah. territory in New Brunswick, about three hours north of uh, Halifax. Yeah, that's the name of the uh, reserve. And it's Mi'kmaq. Mm -hmm. That's where the ground zero was for the anti-fracking uh, protest. Yes. Okay, that's the name of that nation. That's the yes. name of the nation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what and was your question? Oh, well, no. Uh, uh, it's Well, question and an afterthought, but... Uh, what what I'm saying is, uh, uh, you uh, Occupy Toronto live stream uh, uh, is break has broken new ground in the past, is breaking new ground now, and and, and it, it'll keep doing this. But this is again, this is a uh, unique opportunity. Uh, everybody, we all this is a, a learning experience for myself, particularly. Okay, because I'm very passionate about uh, these kind of things. But regardless, uh, I, I I sense that we can do like what Lisa's suggesting, rather than just uh, words, just the vain words, like we say in Spanish, uh, the words are taken. The wind takes the words away, uh, and we can make we can make uh, we we you know we can make this world better. And Dominican Republic is going. Uh, through, uh, I think it's going through a juncture. I have some blogs that I uh, tweet daily about that. And Dominican Republic uh, has a unique uh, characteristic that, that Dominicans themselves uh, told me when I first moved to Dominican Republic in 2009 and I started uh, uh, making friends there. The Dominican Republic is a very uh, unpredictable country. Uh, I think Louise can attest to that. Uh, uh, historically, uh, Dominican Republic is uh, unpredictable, just, just like what happened in 1965 in the Constitutionalist uh, Revolution, which is a, a historical uh, turning point in 20th century uh, history in the Caribbean, uh, where the uh, most powerful military in the world invaded Dominican Republic in April of 1965. Uh, Dominican Republic is, a, is a, a very unique nation. It is a key nation of the Caribbean. It has been a key nation. It, uh, it, uh, it shares uh, an island uh, with the First Nation uh, uh, in, in, in this part of the region that broke away from European in, imperialism, which was the Haitian Revolution uh, from 1791 to 1804. But we can go on and on talking about history. Dominican Republic has an incredible history. I've, I've read some things about uh, Dominican history. Uh, I'm not an expert about Dominican history, but it, it, every time I start reading about Dominican history, I mean, you, I mean, you get hooked. Uh, it's it's a it's a very unique it, it's a very unique nation, and it has a very unique characteristics. Now we're we're here in the, in, uh, uh, in the 21st century in the world of uh, social media. We have Cadena Humana Way So. We have Occupy Toronto live stream. Uh, we're having. Uh, the underground people coming on board uh, uh, on this uh, dynamic situation, and uh, I think I can almost predict that this uh, this movement could very well uh, continue to snowball, and that's what it, you know. It pumps oxygen. It pumps oxygen into the veins of us that are on this side of the house that work primarily cyber activism. So let, let, let's keep let's not this be the last, the first and last time that. Uh, that we do this, D. Uh, I, knowing you, I think uh, you're gonna you're gonna want to move forward with this. But but let, let's open up a window. Let's open up a window now to this social movement, and let let's open up 
ourselves to all kinds of possibilities. The, the sky is the limit. The, I think the sky is the limit for these people. And uh, what, what, what are your thoughts about this? The, um, I haven't asked you, but what, what, what is your perspective? What are your thoughts about what's happening there? What, what possibilities do you see with the capacity, with live stream, with Ustream, stream, with social media? Can you give can you give us some thoughts? Uh, yeah, you know? absolutely. And we started on this early on, but we got a lot more viewers. Is I know from you and interviewing you so many times in the last three years, uh, I'm well versed in what's going on in the DR, especially in the last uh, decade or so. That really the history of protests is not normal in the Dominican Republic. It's a very new thing in the last five, 10 years, really. And so how to protest, because a big problem is, as you said numerous times in the, in the Latin American countries, police don't use rubber bullets. They use live rounds. So, you know, yes, I'm an artist. I'm a photographer, filmmaker turned live streamer, a state of the art filmmaking. And as someone you know, for the last third of a century, who's also been a union activist big time, you know, in the union movement, they call me Mr. Health and Safety. I actually have credentials in my pocket. I have the legal authority under the Occupational Health and Safety Act, which is part of the Ontario Labor Act, to shut down any workplace in Ontario, whether I work there or not, or whether it's unionized or not. I'm given that power, and I carry those. So I take health and safety very, very big. So since all these protests and considering the fact that yes in that last time period that i talked about in dr people have died but this is different of all the things because it's a regular thing and that this happened three wednesdays in a row in the capital of santo domingo and and now that it's spreading to it seems like a, almost a dozen places next wednesday and it's going to get bigger is you got to keep people safe so uh with Brian and I, we were imparting to Luis some of the things the organizers should do to keep people safe. Yeah. Like in North America, we have like legal observers watching this. Like in Ferguson, there was a lot of legal observers, human rights yeah. observers. You need to have a medical team there, you know. Uh, you know, you need to, you know, get more live streamers on the ground. You need to be, people don't necessarily have to be on the ground. They could be at home, social media, uh, you know, if people could at least, even if the signal's jammed, they could at least videotape and then upload something, you know, as quick as they can, or certainly take pictures and walk to where it's not being jammed and upload them and, and people could retweet. It's just... How, how to organize this because it seems like for the first time that I could see something is being sustained there so how do you first and foremost in my mind is how do you keep people safe I don't want to see first and foremost anybody died or injured so more than anything being live protects the people as someone who in the field you know has done over 5500 streams I've been jammed hundreds of times by the cops. I've been assaulted by the cops, agent provocateurs. They've tried to smash my gear. You know, hundreds of times they did that. I never go down. I, I just know how to deal with that shit. I know how to turn on a dime and, and I know the tech and I know the theory. I know the art. You know, I, I, I have the knack as a filmmaker. You know, I rarely talk about myself, but... I have the unduly privilege and gift as a filmmaker of putting the audience on the ground. I think all my 35 years of being an anthropological documentary filmmaker, I made over 900 films. I can make a feature in three hours. I, I know how to edit in the field. I'm a master editor. I know film theory. I know live stream theory. And so I have the gift of putting people on the ground. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this show, how to impart the art. Because it's one thing to deal with the tech issues. Just like if you're building a music track, the bass and drum is the foundation that to any live streamer, you need the tech issue solved. You need to deal with all this, know it inside and out, and then the art. You know, how do you put the viewer? And that the, in terms of that team, to think of that live stream, not just as one live streamer, but as a team. Because for the live stream, again, you use the Occupy model of you use social media, but you get everyone to the live stream, get everyone to the live stream, get everyone, you know, tweet, Facebook, blog, email, whatever, you know. And then so people at home could also be on the live chat, right, and mo moderating the live chat and, 
you know, certainly the best examples, I, I think the best live chat is here at Occupy Toronto because we know how many times Global Rev has had troll problems. So you got to look at it as a team and, and, and you got to get also creative in the tech, you know, with this jamming. You know, how do you, uh, they're not going to have jamming equipment in all these places now that it's grown to like 10. They're gonna more going to use the portable ones, which really is not that effective. Um, you know, one trick, when they jam me, and most of the time I'm using a laptop because it's still really strong. Uh, of late, I've been using an Android phone. But when they jam me, and uh, for example, uh, I just reconnect on the laptop. When they jam your signal, you go down and I have to manually reconnect. So I might be down for 10 seconds live, but I'm still recording. So that 10 seconds that was not live, um, you know, every time they jam me, I still keep recording. So when I get back home, I replace all those files where I was jammed with the one perfect copy. So in the archival copy, at least everyone gets, you know, the full thing. Because let's not forget that half the viewers are going to be watching in the archives as well, right? And this will be archived. Um, and... Uh, so I, I see a lot of momentum building and, you know, uh, we need to train people and I'm glad, you know, we can impart because uh, Luis is a big factor in all these protests and, you know, one of the organizers of it. And uh, he is contemplating live stream and uh, but certainly they won't be jamming everybody. So we need, you know, the more it grows, we need live streamers everywhere. Check. Brian, any comments? Um, no, I, and I actually was uh, just contemplating uh, saying good night. Uh, tomorrow is a work day, and um, I've got to get my uh, my beauty rest. Um, but I guess my last comment would be just to uh, thank Ariel and and thank you, Dave, for the great work that you do in uh, putting together these live streams. Um, um, Luis uh, apparently logged off. Uh, yeah, about half an hour ago. Um, you know, I mean, we're doing our own thing to uh, improve uh, human rights and whatnot, but uh, it's people like Luis who are actually on the ground who, um, you know, I, what can I say? I mean, the guy's courage is immense, his heart is immense, and they're the ones who are actually doing the, the, the heavy lifting, and uh, God bless them. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dee, D, can I ask you something before yeah, Go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Close? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, uh, from from because uh, I didn't get the very first part when when Luis came on board because I was having problems with Skype, uh, you know, and then I I caught up with you guys. Uh, what what is what what do you think, D? Do you have any uh, predictions? Uh, of course, you know, I'm an idealist. I confess that. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm an idealist. I